Hello everyone, this is Francisco Briceno, and I will be giving you an introduction to Keras. This introduction has been prepared using the Deep Learning with Python book by Mr. Ketkar. Keras is a neural network library written in Python, and it uses TensorFlow, Tiano, and other neural network services as a backend. In Google Colab, I will be using TensorFlow. For reproducibility purposes, I have created a random seed of 5A31. Then I have created a random data set containing 1,000 rows and 500 columns with float numbers in the half open interval from 0 to 1, but not 1. Then I have created one random label for every row, and this is a vector with integer numbers that can be either 0 or 1. The first exercise is to create a single layer neural network. The first thing to do is to define the model. You can use the sequential function to define the model and call the function with all these parameters or later on you can add layers using the add method. The model needs to know what the input shape it will expect. So in this case the tense function takes two arguments. One is the output and the next one is the input. For the first layer it's important to specify the input. The next thing to do is how we are going to aggregate all these 500 inputs into one single neuron. And for this, we use the activation function. Keras IO provides a list of all the activation functions available in the library, like softmax, for example. Before training the model, you need to configure the learning process, which is done via the compile method. The first thing to do is to select the optimizer, which is the specific algorithm that is going to be used while training the model to update the weights. The list of all the optimizers are available in Keras IO documentation, like CGD or RMS Proc. The next thing to do is to select the objective function used by the optimizer to navigate the space of weights. You can find more information about the loss functions available in Keras I.O. MSE, which is a mean square error between predictions and the true value. This is used for regression, for example. Binary cross entropy, in this case, I'm going to be using it. And it is suitable for binary levels prediction and uses a binary logarithm function. Cross category. Categorical cross entropy is a multi-class logarithm loss and it is suitable for multi-class level predictions. It is also the default choice in association with softmax activation. Last thing to do is about the metrics. You can find more information about the metrics available in the Keras documentation. Accuracy is a proportion of the correct predictions with respect to the target. Precision, it's more about how many selected items are relevant for multi-level classification. Once you have defined how you want to configure your model, you just need to compile the models. Last thing to do is to evaluate the model. You just need to call the data, the model with the evaluate function, the data, labels, and other parameters that you can read more about in keras.io. Before training the model, the accuracy is 0 0.524, which is really bad. So basically, 5 out of 10 will fail. Then, to train the model, you just need to call the fit functions and keep the data, the labels, and the number of epochs, which is basically the iterations on the data set. Then we can evaluate the model one more time. You can see how the accuracy has improved after training the model. Keras also provides you with a view or a way to plot the model, you can see how you take 500 inputs and then aggregate all these 500 inputs into a single neuron using the activation function. The second exercise is to create a two-layer neural network or a hidden layer in between. The first layer will take a dimensionality input of 500 and then generate a dimensionality output of 32. It uses an activation function to aggregate the 500 into 32 values. The second layer will take a dimensionality input of 32. 
Remember that the dimensionality for the subsequent layers is the same as the output dimensionality of the previous layers. For this reason, we don't need to specify the input, just the output. And once again, we use the activation function sigmoid. We compile the model. We evaluate the data before training. Then we train the model. And then we evaluate the data. We can also plot the model to get an idea of what is happening. We can see how the accuracy has improved after training the model and also the activation function. We take 500 input, generate 32 outputs, take 32 inputs and generate one output out of this. The third exercise is about the multi-class classification. In this instance, we start again with the sequential model at one layer with 500 inputs and 32 outputs. The activation function is ReLU in this case. Then we want to create a dimensionality output to be 10 classes rather than one. And the activation function in this exercise is gonna be softmax because we're gonna use multi-class classification. We're gonna change the objection function to be categorical cross entropy and the metrics as well. One last thing that we have to do is to create, to convert the class vectors to binary class matrices. And this is done with the two categorical function. Once again, we evaluate the model before training the data, and then we train the data, and then we evaluate the model after training the data. You can see how the accuracy has improved after training the model. The fourth exercise is about regression. We start again creating a sequential model, adding one layer with 500 inputs and 32 outputs. The activation function is sigmoid once again. And there is one output layer which aggregates all the 32 inputs in, into a single neuron using the activation, using the activation function sigmoid. In this case, we can select the objective function to be MSE and the matrix as a mean square error. Once again, we evaluate the data before training. Then we train the model and evaluate one once again. You can see how the mean square error has decreased after training the data. The fifth exercise is about the optimizer. In this case, we have created a function called train given optimizer, which takes only one parameter, which is the optimizer. We're gonna try CGD, RMS prop, and others. You can see how the accuracy increases in after before training and after training the data. You can see how the optimizer impacts this accuracy like for this random generated data, and Adam is the one that is giving us the best accuracy in this case. We can also play around with the activation function. In this case, we have defined a train given activation function, define a function called train given activation. And we're gonna play around with ReLU, tangent, sigmoid, hard sigmoid and linear. The next exercise are about convolutional neural networks and long short term memory. For the CNN example or the exercise number seven, we're gonna use the MNIST database, which is basically a handwritten digits database It has around 60,000 um, training data and 10,000 validation data. They are digits from zero to nine, so we're gonna have 10 categories, and all of these images are 28 by 28 pixels. They are grayscale also. The first thing that we want to do is to prepare the data set, so we're gonna shuffle and split between train and test sets. 
to call the MNIST data is only a simple function called load data. We will create two arrays, one is the X train and the other one is the X test. If you want to know how many rows are up in this is X train shape, which is a 60,000. And for the X train samples, we have 10,000 rows. And remember, every row will be a matrix of 28 by 28. Um, once again, if we multiply the 28 values, we know that we're going to get the 728 neural inputs to train our neural network. Once the data um, has, has been reshaped, we want to convert this to use Flow32. And this is mainly basically to support GPU computation. Then we would like to normalize the data so every pixel will represent a 0 or a 1. And for this, we just divide by 255, which is the maximum brightness. Since we're going to have 10 classes S, we need to convert the class vectors to binary class matrices once again. So one for every digit. For this reason, we call the top two categorical function one more time. We know that the input shape is going to be the rows times the columns, once again 28 by 28. We start by creating the model and then adding some layers in between. We're going to use the softmax activation because this is a multi-class category. Then compiling the model is only one line here. In this case, we're going to just run one epoch. We, I can increase this number, but you can see here for one epoch it's taking 108, so I'm not going to do it. But if I increase the number of epochs, like 200, I will get a better result. In the first epoch, you can see that the accuracy for that test data was 0 0.9, which is pretty good. And the validation, and the accuracy for the validation data is 0 0.9. 796 but I'm pretty sure we can improve this by increasing the number of epochs you can see here how the input is, is it looks like we have 28 by 28 then how it's gonna drop in this, this also is a pretty important parameter we can improve accuracy by randomly dropping out some of the back propagation um, values here into our in, inside our neural network. The last exercise is about the long term, long short term memory. This exercise, the data set that we're going to be using is from the movie database IMDb. We are optimizing the input data to take the max features. 20,000. Um, IMDB contains data which are the reviews, um, approximately 25,000 reviews, and they are categorized as a positive or negative. So basically, a binary classification um, will be this kind of the problem here. So once we have prepared the X train in the X test data set, we just need to create our, our sequential model and then define the LSTM here again with a dropout to 0 0.2 we compile the model we train the model and then we evaluate our model here we can see in the test mat matrix that um, the accuracy on the test data is 0 0.7 and the, the accuracy on the um, evaluation data is 0 0.83 you can see the graph plot here of the model. So in summary, Keras is a very powerful library that has built in a lot of functions, including data sets. Um, and we can all use NumPy to generate random data. And I hope you can play around with this notebook that I have prepared for you and possibly use it in your project. Colab also helps in understanding Keras because 
it has all the necessary software packages installed in the, in the collab itself environment. I hope you enjoyed this video and good luck with your final project.